Well, welcome to uh, worship service on May the 17th, our eighth day of uh, being in e-worship, I guess we could call it. And uh, we're looking forward to getting back together soon and hopefully in a safe way. We, we uh, plan to begin Boat Church next Sunday and, and also our indoor services. And uh, we're going to have lots of ventilation and air movement and things like that. But realize also that a lot of folks may not be ready to come and uh, be with us in the building or, or together with other folks. And, and uh, that's your decision. That's your, your choice. And we honor that. But uh, we're looking forward to some sunny days and some good times together. And, and so hopefully uh, you'll be able to join us very soon. I'm continuing a series of messages about Paul and his journey from, from uh, Jerusalem to Caesarea to Rome, the uh, last part of the book of Acts. And, and we've been talking in past weeks about that journey and how God chose Paul and some of his companions to, to travel to, to Rome to testify about Jesus. And last week, we, uh, we looked at the storm and how God delivered them even through the storm to, to new places and how they were able to trust God in the midst of the storm, how he delivered them. And uh, today we, we want to look at what happens when the daylight came and, and what the, the new adventure holds. And so uh, I'm reading from Acts chapter 27, uh, beginning with verse 39. It says, when daylight came, they did not recognize the land, but they saw a bay with a sandy beach where they decided to run the ship aground if they could. Cutting loose the anchors, that they left them in the sea and at the same time untied the ropes that held the rudders. They hoisted the foresail to the wind and made for the beach. The ship struck a sandbar and ran aground. The bow stuck fast and would not move. And the stern was broken to pieces by the pounding of the surf. The soldiers planned to kill the prisoners to prevent any of them from swimming away and escaping. But the centurion, if you remember last week, his name was Julius. He was in charge of Paul and, and uh, had become acquainted with Paul, one of those who, who uh, listened and heard Paul as he shared his faith. And, and so the centurion wanted to, pair, to spare Paul's life. And uh, so he kept the soldiers from carrying out their plan of of killing the, uh, the prisoners. He ordered those who could swim to jump overboard first and get to land. The rest were, get, were to get there on planks and pieces of the ship. And in this way, everyone reached the land safely. Once safely on shore, they found that the island was called Malta. The story of the landing at the island of Malta is an interesting story in itself, and we'll look more next week at the island itself and some of the inhabitants there. But, but I want to think today about uh, what it means to let go. They had set out four anchors the night before. It had been 14 days without seeing the sun or the stars at night, cloudy and rainy and windy and they were driven by the wind across the Mediterranean Sea. Finally, one night, they, they thought they were getting close to land, and they set out the, the instruments to measure the depth, and they discovered they were getting closer to land. So they threw out four anchors, and they, and they waited, prayed for the daylight. And so Luke, in this uh, letter, this book of Acts, tells us that when the morning came, they looked and they saw a, a, an island. They didn't recognize it from the distance where they were, but they, they saw this island. And um, they decided that that was the destination they would go for. And so they determined they would get rid of the anchors and the ropes that were holding the rudder in place, and they were going to go with the wind and try to make it for the, for the sandy beach they could see ahead. And so they hoisted the sail and they started out, but uh, didn't get that far. They hit a sandbar and the ship went aground into that sandbar and stuck. 
the bow stuck in the sandbar, the, the stern of the boat being dashed to pieces by the pounding surf. And uh, then we read that Paul and the prisoners were rescued by the centurion. They, they jumped overboard, abandoned the ship, and swam to the shore. And, and as Paul had told them the night before, everyone made it safely. No lives were lost, just the ship and its cargo. They found themselves on the island of Malta. It's been a crazy journey, a crazy trip. Um, I have a couple of uh, riddles for you, some riddles about traveling or, or about, uh, about going from one destination to another. Uh, riddle number one, what travels around the world but stays in one corner? And if you said a postage stamp, you're correct. Another Riddle, why did the librarian get kicked off the plane? Well, the plane was overbooked. That's a, one of those groaners, I think. But uh, what goes up the hill and down the hill and, and all around the town and across the country but never moves? Well, if you said a road, you were correct. Lots of... Lots of traveling was done by Paul the Apostle in his journeys uh, to deliver and share the gospel all around Asia Minor and eventually into Europe, and now he's headed for Rome. Let me ask you a question. Where was the last new place you went? A place that you had never been before, a place that you didn't recognize, Was it exciting or was it scary? Did you go on vacation or or maybe business? Maybe it was a comfortable kind of experience or maybe it wasn't very comfortable at all because of the circumstances. One of the last new places I visited was Rinda's hometown there in western Kentucky. We went for a funeral, so it wasn't really the the most pleasant experience, and yet uh, it was fun to meet relatives and to talk to old friends and to to see new places, and uh, it was fun to learn some of the things that were familiar to her and to get acquainted with that, and and, and sometimes it's exciting to, to go on a new adventure. Sometimes it may be a little frightening. Well, the voyage across the Mediterranean Sea took Paul and his associates to a new place. They didn't recognize the land, Luke writes, there as he tells about the new day and the the moving across to the land. The ship was of no longer any value. It was time to get off. Stuck in the sandbar, beaten to death, not only by the waves now, but it had been a rough journey, and they had been using ropes to hold the the ship together and and ropes to hold the the, uh, rudder in place, and and so they were ready to get off, and they could see a viable option. There was a beach ahead that looked like a good place to swim towards. Do you know the journeys of our Christian faith can lead us to new places, Places of letting go and trusting in God for something new. The ship was once their security, but it wasn't any longer. Battered, no longer able to take them to their destination, it it was worthless in many ways. And so the only option was to let go of the ship, to, to get off. And in life, sometimes the things and the people that we depend on are no longer seaworthy. Perhaps it's that old house. Perhaps it's a parent or a loved one. Perhaps the job, the people you've always known and have always been there for you. And sometimes life's storms take us to places of letting go, of jumping in, of leaping out in faith. 
Some people are more adventurous than I am, and they love to travel and experience new things. But I suspect that even those who are very adventurous have their securities, their safety nets, their comfort zone. And so letting go of people and things that we've depended on all our lives takes faith and it takes courage. Sometimes there's no other choice but to dive in, to let go, to leap off in faith. And still, even when you really don't have much choice, there's some courage, some faith, some trust that's required, some boldness of some sort. There's a leap into the unknown, leaving the broken vessels and things behind. We discover here in this passage that God provided for Paul and those with him. First of all, he provided the daylight. The night before, they were afraid they were going to run aground against some rocks, and so they cast out the four anchors from the back of the boat and prayed for the morning. And then the morning came, and as the dawn rose, it was still windy, and and the waves were crashing against the boat, but they could see that island. There was a new hope, a new destination, And so they decided that was the destination that they would go for. And then God provided, first of all, the safety. None of the prisoners were killed as normally they would have been. The centurion stepped in and rescued them. There was equipment that was needed like the the planks and the pieces of ship that some floated on to get to that island. And then we'll discover next week, but, but even reading the first part of Acts 28, the people of the island they got to were friendly people. They were welcoming people. And God provided for them in amazing ways. And I wonder, in your life's journeys, how has God provided for you when you've had to let go. I wonder, for you, was there that knowledge or that understanding or that, that uh, lightning flash, that inspiration that gave you the indication that where you are, what you're doing isn't going to work anymore? Maybe the message came loud and clear. It's about time to let go. It's about time to gather your wits and your courage and your faith for a new adventure. Doors may be closed and the things that you depended on came to a sudden halt. Your loved one is gone. The house burned down. The job was too stressful or was lost due to the Economic downturn, maybe health concerns. But maybe in the process, God provided a new destination, a new island there on the horizon for you to move towards. Maybe it was a new job or a new friend or a boldness and a courage that said, whatever is out there, it's got to be better than this. I've had some times when letting go was necessary, even though it might not have been my first choice. The things that were once secure, that community, that church family, that group of people weren't so safe and secure anymore. The people once trusted weren't there. Or perhaps they weren't able to provide and protect and care And so there came a point where moving to a new community or changing location or going in a different direction was the best option. You've had those times as well when letting go and jumping off the security of that ship into waters and a new direction 
for part of your life. And even now you know that ahead on your journey, there are more of those times, more letting go to come. I believe that faith in God, faith that he has a plan and a purpose for us, makes the jumping off a little easier. Trusting in God and confidence in him makes the letting go easier to do, makes it less fearful and more exciting instead. Paul the Apostle had met Jesus on that road to Damascus, and that was a fearful time, but it changed his life, and little by little he came to know the Jesus that others knew. And he came to depend on God and the Holy Spirit was guiding and directing him to to go to all of those different places to share the gospel. And even now, the Spirit of God has told him that he's going to testify before Caesar about Jesus Christ and the salvation that he offers and the eternal life. Paul knew that that was to happen and and the angel that had stood before him, uh, stood beside him, I should say, And told him everyone will get to the island safely. Only the ship would be lost. He had confidence that that was true and it would happen. And so he said, I know it will happen just as I've been told. And his assurance that nobody would be lost and sharing that assurance with other passengers on the ship must have given them some hope as well. And so when you know Jesus, and when you walk with him, and when you're learning through experiences that you can be confident that Jesus has a plan and a purpose, and that he controls the winds and the waves, and he can guide you safely, then you have more courage to let go. You have more faith to venture in that new direction. You're able to hear God say it's time to let go of the old ship and move toward that new direction. And I believe your faith and your courage and your confidence in God can be something that gives confidence and hope to others, to your children or your grandchildren, to the neighbor next door, to that person who's vitally afraid of what might be ahead. I believe that Having that faith and that confidence, knowing Jesus and walking with him is a vital key to what comes next. Let me ask you a question. Is there a ship that you're holding on to that's about to succumb to the winds and the waves of life's sea? Is there something you're holding on to that you're hearing God say it's just about time to get going, to let go, to move ahead. For example, we've been at home during the COVID-19 storm. Yes, it's been a place of safety and security and pretty much we've been isolated, hopefully away from that corona virus, pretty secure, but things are changing. Maybe the money's running out or you're going to need to get back to work or groceries are running out or there are things that you'd like to do as the weather warms up. And you may be considering, how much longer do I stay home? When is it time to venture out? How do I know what God's plan and purpose for me? How do I know that I'll be safe? And there may come a time where Staying in the place that used to be safe isn't anymore. God, I believe, will show you. There are other kinds of ships that we hold on to. Maybe it's that loved one who was sick. You were taking care of them. They were taking care of you. You knew that this stormy time of illness would end But having them around and part of your life was part of the security. They've always been there. You've trusted them. You've lived life with them. 
and they had wisdom, and they had that fun personality, and they had the ability to make your life better. But eventually, things changed, and maybe they're gone. Or maybe, you know, the time is coming when they will no longer be there. There'll be a time to let go, and that's a scary thing to go on without them. Graduation might be one of those times of letting go, one of those times when, when it's about time to move to a new island, a different place. Sometimes you become dependent on parents and on the security they provide and the food they put on the table and and the hope and the guidance and the wisdom, and yet there's a time when you let go. Yes, the future is exciting, but it's also scary and makes you nervous and uncertain, and there are decisions to be made and, and choices. Future depends somewhat on those choices. Maybe it's something else in your life, a relationship that's been part of your life, but it's sort of been toxic, or it's sort of been not what you thought it should be. Or maybe it's the clutter of material things or, or sentimental things that is so bogging down your life or your home or your environment, and you don't want to let go of them, but they are burdening you, and you're hearing God say, it's time to clean house a little bit. It's time to change things. It's time to let go. Old habits, traditions. We love those old hymns of faith, but there are beautiful new choruses and songs that are just as powerful and just as filled with faith. We, we love those old habits of reading out of the hymnal or, or maybe gathering together, sitting in our favorite spot in the church, but, but maybe there are new ways and new opportunities. Let me ask you another question. Do you believe that God has a plan for you? Do you believe that he has a plan and a purpose for the storms of your life? I believe there's a plan and a purpose for the COVID-19 storm, maybe lots of them. We're learning new things and venturing out in new directions, but also we're needing to trust and to have faith and to say, well, I don't know what's going to happen next, but I believe God has a plan and a purpose for my life. Do you believe that he has a purpose for this place in your life? Or for that ship that is about ready to be finished in your life? Looking back, I can see how God was at work in past storms. Some of those times that I needed to pick up and move my family to a new town. Scary. Leaving behind old friends and old relationships and and new things that may have been just as uncertain as the past, but, but but we knew that it was time. Time to change. And I can see now how God was so good and so wise and and somehow he helped us through that. And there were times when the house didn't work anymore, and so it was time to build a new one. There were times when, when sending some of our children off to college might have been scary for us and for them, but, but look at what God has done and how God has done amazing things and how God has answered prayers. And I can see how I've grown in ways that I never would have if I hadn't had to venture out in faith, if I hadn't had to let go and and go in a new direction. There are times that God uses those new adventures to test us. When God stirs your nest, there's a reason. And so we need to look for those reasons. We need to look and pay attention to what God is doing in our lives. In the book of Acts, Luke tells us, that they let the anchors go into the sea. And they cut the ropes that were holding the rudder in place. And they raised the sail and let the wind take that ship as far as it could go. Headed for the beach, and there 
they got stuck on the sandbar, but maybe even the sandbar was shallow enough that some could get out and begin to swim. It's scary to let go. But then again, it's also exciting and adventurous. A new opportunity and something new that God is about to do. When my children were young and we lived in Scottsburg, the elementary school was just uh, half a block down from the Baptist church. And so in the mornings, I would drive the kids to school on my way to church, and they would ride the bus home in the afternoon. And I had a, a cassette tape that fit in the car that we had at that time. And, and, and the cassette tape, maybe you've heard the song by Stephen Curtis Chapman. It says, saddle up your horses, there's a trail to blaze. This is the great adventure. And we'd play that CD on the way to school every morning, kind of as a way to, to say a new day, a new adventure. Some great new thing is about to happen. And so I wonder, what new exciting adventure is awaiting you? Don't forget, God is at work in all of this. In the storms, in the letting go, God is at work. Don't forget, he is Lord over all, over the winds and the waves, over the people on that island, over the ship that's falling apart, over the relationships of people that you meet and those who are with you along the journey. God is mighty and powerful and good, and we can trust him in this storm as we venture to a new place. Let's pray together, shall we? Heavenly Father, teach us by the times of jumping off in faith, the times of letting go. Teach us, Lord, in the, in the new adventures that you are there. And that you have good things for us and you have blessings in store for us. And, and that sometimes letting go of those things that were old and familiar is necessary in order to gain new knowledge or new wisdom or new experiences. And, and so, Heavenly Father, teach us in these exciting times, yes, fearful times, yes, strange times, uncertain times, but that then again may be exciting times, that you have something good in store for us. Help us to trust you and to know that you are Lord of all. We praise you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. And, and we look forward to seeing you next week, whether it's uh, in uh, live church in, in uh, the sanctuary or at the boat church, or we also hope to continue to, to have our streaming service so that you can watch and join us at home if that's uh, still where you need to stay. So uh, God bless you and we look forward to seeing you again soon.